According to a report by a local and governmental organization, I Choose Life Africa, 36% of male students and 10% of female students who are in high schools in Kenya have ever had sex. The report adds that only 33% of boys and 50% of girls reported using condoms. The report further indicates that one quarter of the students had sex with more than one partner in the last 12 months. A study done by Census Wide and published by the Independent Age in February this year reveals that many elderly people are sexually active, contrary to a popular belief. The survey shows that more than half of the people aged 65 and above say they do not feel like they have enough sex. Sadly, only 41% of the people can describe at least three or more symptoms of a sexually transmitted disease, according to the NGO's report. Welcome to today's episode of Rare Diseases as we focus on a sexually transmitted infection called Mycoplasma genitalium. There are several types of sexually transmitted diseases, among them chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV AIDS, genital herpes and syphilis. One rare STD is Mycoplasma genitalium. It is an emerging sexually transmitted infection that is rarely spoken about or diagnosed among many. I spoke to Dr. Paul Congo of Fandom Hospital and he tells me more about the Mycoplasma genitalium. Mycoplasma genitalium was first isolated in 1981 and was later identified as a new species for mycoplasma bacteria in uh, mycoplasma species in uh, 1983. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bacteria that causes infection uh, both in men and women, but it's more common in homosexuals and those people who have been treated by, with, uh, with azithromycin tablets. Eh? Uh, Mycoplasma genitalia, also known as MG or MGEN, that's what they use to call it, uh, is a bacterial infection that's uh, in the class that we call STIs, sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, it stays in the urinary tract and the genital organs of humans, that is people, us, and uh, it is responsible for urethritis, eh? that is inflammation of the urethra. Uh, and uh, in women, mostly is what we call pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, and cervicitis. So MG is also uh, responsible for higher prevalence of HIV in the sense that uh, it increases the chances uh, of you getting the disease. MGEN, as Dr. calls it, is the second most prevalent STI. Despite its widespread prevalence, MGEN can be difficult to diagnose and treat. As Dr. Paul affirms, the major cause of mycoplasma genitalium is sexual encounter with an infected person. Symptoms of this infection could be nonspecific and non-existent, yet when left untreated, it can cause devastating health problems including urethritis. Apparently, clinicians are less familiar with mycoplasma genitalium than they are with other more common STIs that they have experience in treating or have learned about in a medical school. Testing for MGEN can be cumbersome and time-consuming because it is a low-growing organism. Dr. Paul says there is a way into identifying MGEN in a patient. Uh, the signs and symptoms are just like any other STI, but uh, it's more, more like chlamydia trichomatis or Nicelia gonorrhea, which is commonly referred to as gonorrhea. Uh, the disease itself has, uh, is more common than the two of them combined. MG uh, can be asymptomatic, that is without symptoms, or can have symptoms. These symptoms include uh, watery discharge from the genital organs or uh, mycoperiodic discharge, eh? that is pass like discharge. It's, um, in men, it will cause what you call urethritis, that is inflammation of the urethra, mm. which uh, men will present, pre present to the clinician as uh, pain when you relate for women, uh, it will be now the urethritis plus bleeding after sex, and it can also cause low abdominal pain, whereby it would mean that the infection has gone up to the endometrius, endometritis, what you call endometritis, 
that is it has gone up to the uterus. Also, uh, it can cause what we call appendicitis, that is infection of the tubes, the fallopian tubes, whereby the end product can be infertility. So the only way you can really know that it is mycoplasma genitalium is through a culture. For you to, to know which STIs you have, eh, most of them you require a culture. Even for gonorrhea, you have to do a culture for you to know that it's gonorrhea. So, and that's the only way you differentiate between mycoplasma, gonorrhea, and other STIs. Culture, culture is a, is a lab test that uh, now in the case of MG, we will swap the, the genital, that will take our cotton, swap the area of the genitals, go to the lab, eh? grow this bacteria, that is give this bacteria that you have corrected, and give them food so that they grow. And uh, once they grow, you are able to, to now give them drugs to kill them, mm -hmm. know which is the most effective drug in killing them. Then we know that this is the best drug to cure this person. Yes. Instead of trying the drugs on people, we try it in the lab first so that we are able to treat it effectively. Significant antimicrobial resistance presents a major challenge to the treatment of this infection because Mycoplasma genitalium lacks cell wall, antibiotics targeting the cell wall biosynthesis are ineffective against the organism. Challenges in making a diagnosis of MGen infection pose one of the most important barriers to successful treatment. That notwithstanding, Dr. Paul argues that it is easy to treat Mycoplasma genitalium. The treatment is quite simple. Mm -hmm. We just require a simple antibiotic called azithromycin, uh, which you take one tablet once daily for three days. Uh, that's the one recommended by the WHO, and it's the first one. Alternative medication includes doxycycline, uh, erythromycin, uh, basically macrolides, what we call macrolides, uh, they are good with it. To prevent further development of antimicrobial resistance in Mycoplasma genitalium, clinicians need to avoid prescribing the wrong antibiotic. However, the place of personal responsibility on the part of the individuals should not be overlooked. For those who have the disease, eh, the first thing is to get treated. And, uh, it's quite cost effective, but it's quite cheap to treat the, the NG. And, uh, the recurrence rate are also quite low, if you observe good sexual practices. For those who don't have MG yet, uh, the only way to prevent yourself is by practicing safe sex uh, and uh, by abstinence. Uh, safe sex is by use of condoms, this is the only contraceptive that will prevent you from getting STIs. Mycoplasma genitalium is an emerging STI which, if not treated, will cause adverse health effects. It is important for individuals to constantly go for testing in medical centers and those infected to faithfully continue in their treatment schedules. You seek treatment early for any STI or anything that uh, is suspected to be an STI, a UTI, and uh, also to practice your sex because that's the only way that you prevent. STIs and other and the Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, as we explore further the common but rare diseases. My name is Kim Moneki and this is Rare Diseases.